this is a bit different to the presentation yesterday. This is um, uh, about the Francis Hookham collection, and it resides in the Whipple Museum of the History of Science at the University of Cambridge in the UK. So that's the outside of the building. Interestingly, it doesn't say any of those titles on the building. It says Laboratory of Physical Chemistry. This is open to the public. Uh, if you wish to visit in Cambridge in the UK, it doesn't open at the weekends. You have to go during the week, which is a bit of a nuisance. Um, but inside, this is what it looks like. This is the Whipple Museum. So it's been there for quite a while. Uh, Jim is probably going, oh my goodness, at this point, uh, because they've got some fantastic uh, scientific instruments, pieces of equipment. They've got a very early scanning electron microscope. Uh, this thing down here, hold on, how do we do this? Set right there, button. Yeah, there. Round button. This one here. Uh, so this is Archimedes apples, and it's for teaching fractions. So each apple is, uh, and th these are wood, and, each, and, and they are absolutely beautiful. And each one of those, there's a core inside the apple, and then the pieces fall off so that you can, you've got fractions. So you've got thirds and quarters and fifths and all of that sort of stuff to create your apples. Uh, there are the orreries, is that the right word, um, uh, in there as well. You can see up here in the main gallery, there is a, a giant telescope. There's um, all of the clocks around the base of this orrery, more telescopes. So if you're into scientific instruments, this is the place to go. But of course, we're nerds, aren't we? So we want to look at calculators. So if you go into the annex next door, there are these museum display uh, cases. And in the top, so normally the drawers are all closed. I've pulled the drawers out so that we could take photos. In the top, you can see here, there's an HP 41, an HP 97, and then all sorts of other things. So we've got, what's this, TI Little Professor, is it called? Something like that? Um, what's it? Sinclair Presidential underneath. Sinclair present Presidential, yeah, this one here. Yeah, galaxy. Galaxies. Uh, there's all sorts, yeah, Sharp EL6, is it, or something? Uh, I think is one of those. Then in the next cabinet, which is this one over here, in the top you can see you've got the mechanical calculators, the Kurtz, Kurtz. Uh, underneath we've got Abacus, <laughs> uh, and then down, uh, Lady Sliderall person. She's not here. Uh, no, she's gone. Um, but uh, there's, uh, there's slide rules as well. Uh, and uh, and if, again, if you pull the drawers out, there, there are lots of other calculators in there as well. What's perhaps interesting about these is that uh, there's things like, there's, there's the Sinclair, which I think you could buy as a kit. Um, and, and that was something like £10, I think, that, uh, for, to buy one of those, whereas an, an HP at the time would have been £100 or something along those lines. So, very expensive in comparison. Mark, are these drawers uh, operable by just the visitor of the museum? A anybody can just rock up, pull the drawers out, and they're, they're there. You can't touch any of the kit. Yeah. No, but, but the glass. Right? The glass, the, the gla yeah, so I, I took these photos. Um, yeah, just uh, I, w I was in there with the curator and we pulled them out and, and I arranged it so you could see. Oh, well, that's an interesting way of doing it. Yeah. Um, so now you might think, well, where did these calculators come from? How did they end up with this interesting collection? So we'll, we'll get on to that. What alerted us to the fact that those drawers were openable was uh, Frank who, Kingswood, who is our HPC uh, treasurer. He lives in Cambridge. He went in the museum and he saw uh, this up uh, in the main gallery, Stacks, Packs and User Hacks, A Handheld History of Personal Computing by Michael McGovern. Um, and it's quite an interesting article because I don't know if you can read this at the back. It says, in 1988, a churlish columnist for the Daily Telegraph by the name of Boris Johnson remarked upon the Whipple, Whipple Museum's frequent acquisition of Cambridge architect Francis Hookham's extensive handheld calcul collect calculator collection. Uh, and then he, uh, ironically applauding the museum's curatorial foresight, the author encouraged it to branch out from mere science 
and become a major tourist attraction for its peerless collection of obsolete gadgets of every kind. I, th I think you have somebody called Trump who has similar diverse views, doesn't it? Um, so anyway, a very, very interesting uh, uh, assessment. What's interesting about this article, and this is available online, is that it refers to PPC, HPCC, Richard, uh, Recall 20 by Vlodek and Frank, the HP 48 hex table, um, and Thank You Beep. What? Uh, it says HP 48 hex table, then what? I mean, well, it's, it's referred to it in, in the text of the document. This, this document is, is many pages long. Oh, this so, is just uh, items of importance of historic development? Th th this is in the article, yeah. Ah, in, in, uh, so this is published, this is chapter 14 of the Whipple Museum's uh, 75, 75th or 100th or something um, anniversary sort of thing. So, so there's a chapter on different aspects of the collection and this is chapter 14, and it's specifically about well, stuff that would interest us. My concern was that the 41 hex table has an interesting historical background, and I was just wondering if that was included. You know. uh, no, I mean, it, it refers to it, and it refers to a, the fact that as, as a community, we okay. identified the, the hex codes and, and could uh, access the, the additional functionality. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so that is, is worth reading if you've got a few moments on the plane or whatever on the way back. Um, Mark, what, that document came from what uh, book? Or yeah, so, th so there's a big, thick book, um, which is, oh, 100 pounds or something like that. Yeah, but, but it's about the whole of the, all of the collections in the museum. So that's okay. just chapter 14. So, um, but it, it's, a, a, you know, a, a synopsis of where the museum had got to up to that point at whatever anniversary it was. So Francis Hookham, as was mentioned uh, in the, uh, the previous page, he was a Cambridge architect and he decided to make a collection of calculators because the, the technology was evolving and developing so fast he, he had the foresight to think, oh, well, hold on a minute, what was good last year is obsolete this year. The technology is moving so quick. So he uh, invited people to, he, he had a collection of his own. He went into Heffers, which is the famous uh, bookstore in Cambridge, and um, spoke to them. Uh, and, he, and he did things like he collected the Heffers price list of HP calculators, because they were a stockist of HP calculators. So we've got a historical record of the prices of the calculators in the UK, because Jake and, and the other archivists are, are over here. Um, so we're sort of missing the history of what went on. Uh, and in there, there are other interesting documents, like the typewritten, or, or maybe, um, what do you call those? What were they called? The, the ones with the ball, uh, the printers with the ball. Selectric. Was it a Selectric? Yeah. Oh it's, it's, oh, it's called golf ball, isn't it? The technology is golf ball printer. Is that right? Is, do you refer to it as that? We called them golf ball. Okay, you, but you know what I mean. So it, 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 it may have been printed on that, but, but we've got the press release from HP in Berkshire uh, about the launch of the HP 41. And there's, there's other things in there, like um, a, a typewritten or print, pr you know, basic printed uh, article about adding the crystal to the HB45 to get the timer to be accurate and, and things like that. So, so we've, we've found a lot of interesting stuff. So he, Francis Hookham, um, he was an architect. So here is the front cover of Multiply. You can download the PDF from their website. If you go onto the hbcc.org website, you can click on it and, and it actually take, just downloads the PDF straight away. So um, being an architect, he was pretty good at drawing. And you will see on the front here, this is his HP 41 that he used. And uh, why, why would he have a, I mean, he's clearly very artistic. I couldn't do that. Um, and it's a good 
we can instantly tell, can't we, that that is an HB41, but even though it's stylized in architectural style drawing. Yeah. Um, but the reason for that is um, that the invitations that he sent out to people, he hand drew that. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, the thank you cards. If somebody sent him a calculator, he hand drew cards with the calculators on, which I think I've, I've put in the, the slide in the wrong order. Never mind. Uh, the book was produced by a student uh, working for the university part-time um, and it's got in there uh, an index. What's intriguing is, it, is, the index is, oh, is the index is not by page number of the book uh, 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 or the PDF, but it's by the Hookham collection number uh, and he, he put a number on every one of the calculators that he received so that it could be indexed. What's intriguing is the student made a number of errors in this book. So, um, now what is it that's missing? Oh, sharp uh, is missing from the index. So the, the collection's got TI, sharp, HP, many other makes, but sharp is not in this index. So, so we go from... Uh, we've got Rockwell, Silver Reed, Sinclair, Sperry, but no Sharp in there, even though there's lots of pictures of Sharp calculators. So, it, there are, like I say, there are a number of errors in the PDF. Um, here's what a typical entry looks like. I, I've sliced this and put, put it um, side by side so that you can read it. Uh, so, this is the HP 41. Everybody know, familiar with the HP 41? Yeah. <laughs> um, what's, what's really fun about it is there is a key down here to all of the functionality uh, that the calculators have. So it will tell you things like whether it's programmable uh, and, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, the, the student who was doing this, uh, for every calculator, they conducted a personal test non-scientific test of the keyboard. So every one of these calculators. Now, I've had various HB41s. To describe it as short travel, light and squashy with no click, uh, I think is doing an injustice to possibly the world's most perfect keyboard. But, um, but anyway, um, the other thing, uh, there are other errors that have crept in. So uh, about 175 pounds in December 1973, when it was introduced in 1979. That, that was a so, prototype keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> also, maybe, maybe it's squishy then. Yeah. Also, the prototype is not from Singapore. Like everything on there is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there are. So don't treat this as as uh, you know gospel history. Um, but for the 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 book was actually published in, in a very limited print run. We think there were only 25 copies of it made. Uh, yeah, so, um, so if you want first edition uh, of the print run of 25, I have possibly the only one left spare. So see me afterwards with your checkbooks or large sums of money. <laughs> Sorry. You know, a museum is a very expensive operation. Yes. And, and how, and you mentioned uh, students make it help compile this all this stuff. Yeah. So that's volunteer labor to do that, right? The, what the, the student was actually doing a master's project on the history oh, of science oh, and technology. Oh. So so yeah, that's how they, they got it done. So, so the, the institution is kind of supporting this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, there are some beautiful pictures in the book. So here, um, so so they didn't just take pictures of the calculators. Here is a picture from the book, taken from the PDF. Uh, the, the, you'll be pleased to know that cases have been stored separately from the calculators, and the manuals are stored separately, and the batteries are not in anything. Yeah, so, so they, they, they're on uh, the right lines. They are, after all, a museum preserving history, and they, they know what, what they're doing. What's intriguing is that I went recently in order to uh, b copy, I spent a day there copying HP 6797 program cards that are in the collection. You, 
people who have those calculators probably have them. It was standard pack and stat pack and that sort of stuff. I, I don't have them, so I, I, I spent a day there. Uh, I had to wear um, the blue gloves, the latex gloves, in order to use the card. Well, have you tried pr putting an, uh, a magnetic card into a 97 hold with latex gloves on? It's really tricky. But I'm allowed to touch the books with my hands, which to me seems completely the wrong way around because I'm, I don't think I'm going to damage the magnetic card. And, and incidentally, 1976, every card read perfectly, which, which I'm pretty impressed with. Um, there are some other things that are interesting. I'm sorry, it's not an HP. The Casio QL10. <laughs> so it, it didn't just collect the calculators, but he collected adverts that were in the press as well. So he didn't have this model, but he cut out the advert. A Casio first, the new combination compact, a calculator, alarm clock, and lighter. <laughs> uh, I, I take it nobody's got one of these. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, what? Uh, any, any, any thought? I mean, I'm, I'm lost for words on this one. Somebody said all the things that you carry with you, Yes, I suppose that's it, isn't it? Because you carry an iPhone now, which is your Swiss Army knife of devices. And, and, they th and the Japanese obviously thought, well, what we carry with us is our calculator, our alarm clock, and our lighter. Yeah. Um, fortunately, it, it, does, it, it does say it, it, in the advert, it reassures potential users that the lighter function was independent of the calculator functions, so it's always ready. <laughs> 1978. Anyway, um, this is, I, I mentioned earlier, this is his thank you note. So handwritten, he had pretty beautiful writing, didn't he? Um, so, so if you sent a calculator to him, that, um, then he, he, he gave it a number in the collection uh, and he asked if you know of any others or have any others working, new, broken, whatever. Uh, please send them through, and he gave his address. And, and you got this beautiful HP 41, which was his calculator of choice as an architect. That's what he was using. So quite special, isn't it? It's, it's, uh, Mark, did he have any association with the museum at the time, or was this just something he did in his home? He, he did it himself, and then he gave the collection to the museum. Yeah. He, he did build relationships, uh, Texas Instruments. You'll notice if I go, shall I whiz back to the index? You, you will see over here, there are a lot of Texas Instruments calculators. So Texas Instruments were quite enthusiastic, in the UK were quite enthusiastic about his collection and, and sent him a lot of calculators to preserve. If you look in comparison, the Hewlett Packards, there are, there are very few of them, um, which, you know, so and that because would. Because they don't want to part with them. <laughs> well, maybe because they're expensive. Maybe because he didn't have the relationship. Maybe they thought it was a waste of time or, or what. Are Jeff. <laughs> yeah. People kept them. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Be before COVID, uh, I had six HP calculators, and uh, uh, one of our HPCC members, who many years ago had sold me a card reader secondhand, he worked for HP at Queens Ferry in Scotland, and I asked him, "Do any of your XHP buddies have calculators kicking about at, in their drawers that they never use?" And so I now have about forty um, from people who, some of whom, just didn't want money. Uh, for, th for these things and said we'd rather somebody was using them. So, um, yeah, yeah, very interesting. So, where did we get to? The collection is available online on the Whipple Museum website. So you can go on there, you can explore it. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'll go back to the index one more time. There are, what's interesting, in, in the UK, Casio, which is over here, are 
the predominant brand. Uh, the guy from Royal was saying yesterday that he was having trouble getting shelf space uh, in the shops. Uh, I, I went into our local Ryman's. They had a, a stand, sort of the width of this pedestal uh, and, this, and this high. It had the same uh, Casio calculator on every shelf, but in different colors. So, you know, um, that's, that's what they're up against. Um, but, but the other thing that's interesting about this is that, uh, as well as the British makes, there are a lot of calculators, like Boots. So Boots the Chemist, did that make it to the States? Not, no. So uh, famous high, British high street chemist, and they sold computers. That, well, they sold calculators. I think they possibly still do, um, but sort of for, horrible four-banger things. But they used to sell Casio calculators, Texas Instruments calculators. And they also badge engineered uh, Casio calculators. So you, you could get a, 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 a Casio, but with a Boots badge on it. Yes. Hi. Is the like drug store? Drug yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Sorry, I should have translated. Um, and uh, Dixon's were uh, sort of the British version of Radio Shack. We, we did have Tandy, which was Radio Shack in the UK. Uh, so we had the TRS-80 and, and the Tandy pocket computer and all that sort of stuff. Um, but Dixon's, again, these were largely uh, rebranded uh, calculators. Uh, there's one in there, I think, uh, which is a company called Texet. Uh, I had the very first one of those. Uh, my very first calculator was a Texet, a horrible thing from Woolworths. Um, the keys almost worked most of the time. Uh, it ate batteries. But in the collection, there are uh, different branded versions of those, and some were branded as, as company uh, promotional machines, you know, as well, that sort of stuff. Didn't Texet do a 8 12 c 12 Weren't they one of the 12C clones? Maybe. I've not seen a 12 clone from Texet, but I, possibly, yeah. So the, ca the collection is available online. Uh, you can go onto their website. So it's uh, whipplemuseum.cam.ac.uk. Uh, and you can go in there and you can explore it. Uh, if you create an account, you can, have, uh, you can save your searcher. So I've got a, a one which says Hewlett in Maker, because we've, we've got the old problem of Hewlett-Packard and Hewlett-Space-Packard and all that sort of stuff. So just stick Hewlett in there. Um, and it, there are only 19 things in there that are Hewlett Packard, so not a huge number. Um, but you can then uh, click on each one of those. It's got some information about it. Uh, we, we're going to work with them and decode their serial numbers uh, and give them the actual dates. We, we did do a few, but, and, and we put it in their master database, but we don't know if it's got to the website yet. So we, we're going to put in things like um, when it was actually uh, manufactured. And then you can click on the images and they've got sort of uh, reasonably professionally, oops, sorry, professionally taken photographs in, in their vault. So this, this is in their vault underneath the museum which you don't get into. So I, I, I um, work, got permission to go in with the curator and the, you know, the curator sits there with me and make sure that I'm doing the right stuff. Um, and, uh, but they photograph stuff. And as well as the collection, there is all, all of Francis Hookham's notes. So this lot, you will see in, Jake, November? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, these are the scans. Uh, and so we found quite a wealth of HP brochures and material to expand Jake's collection because this is the British stuff. So whereas you will look at, I don't know, did, did you have the blue one, the blue collection of brochures? I can't remember. Um, some of them. But it will say printed in the USA. So we've got printed in UK or printed in Belgium or Holland or whatever it is. So, so there are different variations on these. So, so there might be something historically interesting, but we thought it was um, because they haven't catalogued anything other than the calculators. Uh, they offered 
to me. They put they put a, in, uh, a, a an intern on the case who has been scanning this lot. So I think this was the first batch of things that we've collected. Um, we found, as you can see from the green things, we found the user program library Europe, which uh, very sadly HBCC inherited uh, from HP. Uh, Vlodek and the guys worked through the boxes and boxes of submitted programs and pulled out all of the good ones. A guy in Cambridge took all of the good ones with the intention of scanning them and cataloguing them and all of that sort of stuff and was ill recently and his family went in the loft and decided to clear out and they threw it all away. Yeah. Uh, Vlodek was very upset. <laughs> so um, it's a work in progress. Uh, we are we're working on the paper items which have not yet scanned. Uh, somewhere, because, because the HP stuff, we did that first, you know, because that's what we're interested in. There is masses of information about all of the other brands as well, uh, brochures and all the rest of it. Uh, I'm, I'm not too fussed about whether we scan that. What I'm more interested in is that um, I'm more interested in Francis Hookham's notes. So there are his handwritten programs for the HP 41. And I think you know, they are going to be the one and the only copy of, the, of those things on the planet. So I, I think they, they should be our priority. Um, so if you're in Cambridge, please visit or browse the material online. Uh, and I will give thanks, even though he's not here, to Josh, who's the director and curator of the museum, who had us uh, HPCC uh, committee members in for our first visit, and Morgan Bell, and she's given me ac complete access in the archives uh, to uh, the, um, what you've seen and uh, has got her intern scanning documents for us. So, any questions? Yes. I yeah. Did, I didn't catch, when you're talking about 41 programs, are they attempting to collect those? Or? In, in the collection, Fran so Francis Hookham was an architect and he wrote HP 41 programs and they're all beautifully listed with his handwritten notes. Um, so we're going we're gonna to scan those. Now, they might be irrelevant, but from the museum's perspective as well, they, they are important because they are, they are irreplaceable. You know, if they lost those, that, that's it. Well, just as, a, as an illustration of what the 41 yeah. created in, yeah, I'll yeah, take it. Yeah. They're not trying to get all the programs on the No, 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 no. Yeah. Bob? Mark, when did he uh, stop collecting or, or whatever the rate? Uh, yeah. Well, the, the book was produced, I think, posthumously for his family. Uh, about and when? Yeah. Uh, about when you're mm. Is it copyrighted? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah private date? runs usually. They don't oh, uh, so it says, pub, uh, right, so it's, it says, dedicated to Professor Lieber Taub, director and curator of the Whipple Museum, and the memory of Francis Hookham, 1931. To, 19, uh, to 2020. Yeah. Um, and I've just noticed as well. So, so there's, hold on, how do I do this? So inside the front cover is his 41. The 41 lives on today. <laughs> and a couple of pages in is a royal calculator. Hey, Tom, look at the one on the upside. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, as a, as a techie guy in the UK, had you heard of him prior to the... No. Okay, so he's no. not, he's not Frank I, Albright I, of UK? No, I, I, I had previously been in that museum and didn't know that that collection existed. I saw, I, I didn't know that the drawers opened. I only saw the calculators in the top, and, and that was it, and, and it, yeah. And so. the people that you talked with there, had they, did you ask them questions like how many people come to see calculators? Am I the first? Or <laughs> anything like that? No, I mean, you've got to be pretty geeky to go in the museum in the first place, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I showed you the, um, the 41 hand-drawn, hand and there's a, what's, what's that one over there? Is that a Casio or a Sharp or something? 
as well. So, so we didn't just draw the 41. So, yeah, Jake. Is it understood or did anyone ask whether he was aware of HGCC? Um, I don't think we have that information, but Michael McGovern, who wrote the article, clearly knew about HBCC because he'd read Recall 20. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mark.